Hello and welcome to Conquering Mount Scrapmore with Brenda. I'm Brenda and this is the last installment of the Sunflower Sew Along. Today we're going to teach you how to do mitered corners. Now, mitered corners when you're doing a you know, solid piece of fabric, it, you know, like you have, um, it's easier, it's easy to do, but if you don't know where you're coming in, like, you know, like you're not sure where, what spot here that you're going to come into, it, you know, it takes a little more tricky. You have to kind of do it backwards. So, I also found out, I also found out, remember on these other ones where I was saying I was leaving, you know, six stripes on my piano keyboard because I chose to do a piano keyboard? I should have left seven. And I'll explain why. Because I forgot that this angle changes and goes up on both sides, right? So what happens is you need an extra little piece just down at the bottom, maybe about that big on either side, right at the bottom. So come on in here a little closer. We'll show you how to get this mitered corner done. Uh, you don't need to do a mitered corner and you can make your border any width you want, but this is what I've decided I was going to do with my quilt. You are welcome to go do what you want to do with your quilt. You can, if you want to finish your quilt a pillowcase method, and not do all the border, you could do that as well. So come on in a little closer. We'll show you how to get this, this miter done. Okay, the first thing we're gonna need is a bit of ch uh, Taylor's chalk here. Um, we're gonna mark our corners. We're just gonna do them one at a time. Now, I'm gonna do the bottom one here first. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take, I guess I should put this under now while I've got it handy the smallest cutting mat in the world what you're going to do is you're going to lay this all, all flat and straight now you're going to need if it was just like you know like 45 degrees you could take your 45 degree line here Ooh, you can't see that you could take your 45 degree line right here and cut along this line right but you don't have a seam allowance so in order to get a seam allowance this is where you end up with needing your three eighths. So we take three eighths, about there, and I'm just gonna ask my cameraman for that little skinny stick ruler that's in my cup. There it is. And what this does is you measure out three eighths away from the corner. So this part, this side, is attached to the quilt. This side is just a flap. Oh, okay. Here. Okay. Here we go. So this side's attached to the quilt. So you want your seam allowance on the flap side, like this side here. So what we're going to do, I've got my 45 here, and I'm just going to line this up. Now, if I didn't have my rotary cutter here right away, I could probably get away with, you know, not cutting it. But... What I'm going to, because I've got my 3 8 down here. 3 8 on an angle will give you a perfect quarter inch seam. So that's what I've just done. And now I've taken this part and I'm going to put it into my string bin. Okay? Don't worry, it won't get, it won't, I won't throw out a big piece like that. Now we're going to do the other side. And we're going to put that here. Now... We're going to lay it again. The 45 is right here, but we want the 45 on this, the, the, the seam allowance on this side, because this is the flap. This is attached to the quilt, right? So I'm going to get my cameraman to zoom in right here so you can see what I'm talking about with that three quarter inch, okay, or three eighths inch, okay. There. So now I'm going to take my ruler. I'm still on my 45 and I'm going to push this over, okay, three eighths of an inch. And there it is. There's my three eighths. And I'm still on my 45. Right? Now I'm going to mark my seam if I need to. Right? If I didn't have my rotor cut, I would mark my seam. And then I would cut it, because that's my cut line, that's not my sew line. Now if I wanted to do this, I could do I could mark my sew line with 
paint or the uh, Taylor's chalk. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of this and I'm just going to pin it. Okay, so once you have both your sides cut, you're going to take them and I'm like, because I didn't get a piano key border, I'm going to line up my go quarter inch down on my needle right in where that uh, the seam meets and I'm going to push it in a quarter inch down here and I'm going to just pin all the way along up and uh, let's see how we get this all done this will work <laughs> some days you know that old song that my um, Mary Chapman Carpenter where they say some days you're the 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 bug some some days you're the windshield some days you're the bug yeah that's sometimes that kind of thing happens here we'll just make sure we get through we want to match up basically what I want to do is match up my my seam so it looks rather seamless now the last time we did um, miter corner on piano key I showed you a cheat well that cheat would go really good right about now because that would it would be perfect your cheat then would be perfect you'd have everything lined up the way you needed it to be and it'd be you'd be done already but if you're doing a mitered corner like from a real mitered corner you might not be able to get away with that so mitered corners are at 40 cut at 45 degrees and then you need a seam allowance right whether if you're doing, um, you know, let's say uh, a, like a tablecloth or napkins, you might need like a 3 8 seam allowance or half inch seam allowance. Well, you always have to remember that that 3 8 inch in or up along where, where you're going to cut, like for this side, you go 3 8 up, right, to the part you're going to cut off. Right, and the same on this side, you go three eighths up on the part you're going to cut off. So, and that's what made that's what's going to give you your perfect miter. Let me get my sewing machine up here now too, because I just sewed my miters with a, a sewing machine instead of trying to blind stitch all this. And uh, I'm just gonna see, make sure all of this goes right, just perfect. I'm always surprised how, when I join these seams, the top matches, right? The top's going to match now. Okay. And there. There we go. So, okay. Now, I'm just going to put this. See, all of the seams now are tagged together, right? So I'm just going to run this part now through the sewing machine. And I'll show you what, and yes, there's a hole here. We're going to show you how, how to do that one too. So let me get my sewing machine out. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. I'll just move all of this over. My black Janome. My new black Janome. I've been playing with this and trying to better learn it and how to work it and everything so hopefully I'm not flipping my seams now when you're doing a piano key where's my foot pedal oh it's hiding it's hiding it doesn't, doesn't want to come out and play okay so when you're doing this with a sewing machine you need to kind of Make sure that your seams underneath aren't flipping. You know, so it's gonna lie nice and flat. I hope you can see what I'm doing. Never run across your pins. Okay, so now 
I'm just going to cut this off. And we're going to just pause and cut to move everything out of the way. Okay, so this is that corner that we finished finished sewing. Now this is what it's going to look like from the front. Right? That's what it looks like from the front. And I think I did a pretty, pretty decent job here. So that's okay. There was a little frayed edge and it just, I don't know, it hooked. And it's going to be buried in the seam alone, so I'm not going to worry about it. But we do have this little hole now to sew up. And that's an easier hand job. Now, one of the things I noticed when we were, when we were sewing up these other corners here was that um, sometimes this leaf had stretched. Right? It was, that you know, like, because, you know, you're showing it, you're moving your quilt around, sewing it, and all the rest of the stuff. So, if that has happened, we just kind of make sure we're easing this in. And when you're hand sewing, and you're easing in, just let me get started here. Uh, here we go. And once you, uh, once you're doing your hand sewing, you're easing in. You know, it's easy to ease in something, right? Because, I mean, it's just, it is what it is, you know? Like, sometimes things stretch and you have to kind of work with it. Because especially this, we're so close to the end. Okay, so I'm just going to put my needle here. And I'm going to try and manipulate this enough with my needles, my little silk pins, to get in close to where I need to be just to hand sew this in. Now, it seems like there's a lot of puckering right there, but that's okay. We'll just work them in. We'll just work it in. And there is quite a bit of gap there, but by the time you, you finish, you know, pushing it in and down and all the rest of the stuff, I mean, it does work in and it will lie relatively flat on top. And you see this with vintage quilts, right? Where some some sewer has had to, you know, manipulate stuff to get it to, to sew in. And you can do that by curving this bottom piece more. You don't want to sew in a pucker, but you could curve in that piece more just to make it flat and just push it flat. And all of a sudden, you don't have a pucker anymore. And you just go through and you keep, you know, yeah, you keep pushing it flat. So that's how we do that. But yeah, like it, the long, like I'm so glad that we decided, I decided I was going to teach how to starch because this, this project could have stretched quite badly without. You know, because it is a big project when I'm done with it, right? So it could have stretched quite badly, you know, with all the seams being in and out and all the rest of the stuff. So just remember that, you know, we've got this. Now we're just going to finish here. I am going to be so glad when I get this. I've decided what I'm going to do next. Like once we finish sewing up this hole, the next will be ironing. You know, making sure everything's lying nice and flat. And then I'm going to pin base this and make a quilt sandwich after. I'm going to sew together a backing. And I think I'm going to use up, I have a bunch of, uh, I have a bunch of browns that I could use on it as a backing. I don't like white backings because I find they get too dirty too quickly. And they're hard to keep clean, but I mean, some people like them, but I mean, you do what you want to do. So, and I have lots of bits and pieces of this and that. Now, because I'm going to hand sew this, my piece backing will not have any batik in it. Because I don't want to have the front all nice and ready to go for hand quilting and then have to fight and struggle with the back to push my needle through and because basically batiking is uh, the thread count so high 
because it's boiled so many times. And batik does not shrink the same way cotton shrinks, right? I mean, some of the really good quality batiks hardly shrink at all because they've been boiled so many times. So we're just getting the last of this done. There we go. There. I'm surprised how smooth it is and wrinkle-free it is without me having um, to iron it. I mean, I will be ironing it soon. Oh, there we go. There's my last loop. Two, three granny knots, maybe. Yeah, three granny knots. And then I cut my thread leaving about a quarter inch of thread and I'm done. I'm now officially done sewing this and this is what this looks like from the front. So once I hand, once I iron it, you know, and steam it a little in place and by the time you finish hand quilting it and everything else, it's going to lie very, very quick, very, very flat. Okay, we are finished. Sewing our sunflower sew along. This is going to be, I haven't ironed this yet. I haven't done any kind of like, you know, making it pretty or anything. This is basically right off the sewing table and, you know, let's hang it up and show everybody what it looks like. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to iron it all and get it all nice and flat. I'm going to piece the backing together to make sure that I have a really eclectic kind of a fun backing with you know bigger pieces and I have some of the greens and the yellows still I think I'll throw them in too just to add some interest and I think it'll be really cute and then I'm going to try and pin baste it and then I'm going to keep the quilting on this very simple just to show off the real scrappy eclectic fun fall palette this is right so I am so happy that you've joined us today and I hope your sunflower soul on quilt is just coming together fabulously. This uh, does sew up very quickly. There's a lot of people that we in the comments, my goodness, we don't understand how fast you can hand sew. They're bigger pieces. This is why it comes together so quickly and it teaches you a lot about how to do your quarter inch seams, working with bias and everything. I did the piano key border on a sewing machine, so I didn't piece all these these pieces together. But I'm so anxious to get quilting this one. It's a big baby. It really is. Now, if you made a queen size, you're looking at five or seven rows, seven rows, and six six flowers across, and then five flowers on the short rows, right? So I mean, this ends up quite big. Very big, and you. I, then it depends on your border, how much drop you want to in your on your on your quilt. So, we hope you have a fabulous week ahead. I've got some fun things coming up in this plant in this year. We, I'm going to try and do two more sew alongs this year, and we're going to do two more case studies. The next case study should be starting up here pretty quick, but it'll be fun. You have yourself a fabulous week. Okay, bye. Hello everyone, just a quick reminder, this is the quilt we're going to start doing our sew along in the beginning of December 2021. This is a beautiful hand pieced, hand quilted. Uh, this is a beginner quilt for hand quilting. This is also an intermediate if you're using a sewing machine. And we're going to start this one at the beginning of December 2021. So if you're watching this eight years from now, don't worry, it's a free pattern. It'll always remain a free pattern. Um, we had a lot of fun doing this with our students and we had a very enjoyable time. So, if you like the videos, if you like this challenge, and you'd like to start a, quil a quilt along, comment below, but like, share, and subscribe with your friends. We are so happy that you're back with us if you're a, a subscriber. But if you're a new subscriber, please join. This is going to be so much fun. Okay, you have a great day. Bye.